Did card porn lie about the patch swap LeBron James rookie card that they are being sued for along with Ken Golden? That's going to be the main focus for today. And whilst it is something we've previously discussed, some information has come my way that is about six months old in the last 24 hours. And it might shock you. It might take you from being 100% convinced that a patch swap did occur to maybe not being entirely sure, to maybe thinking that some hanky-panky has gone on with the likes of card porn or someone else. There's a lot to unpack here, and as I did talk to in my YouTube live the other day, it's something that needs to be revisited primarily because of what we've seen come forward in recent days regarding the card porn allegations. For those of you that basically aren't aware, well, you'd have to be living under a rock, but essentially they've had some hanky-panky go on where they tried to offload a, a game-used Michael Jordan jersey as being from the NBA Finals and trying to get it authenticated and bypassed at an auction site to try and deceive and commit fraud. And I should say these are all complete allegations as detailed by uh, the likes of Darren Ravel in his various news articles on this. But the reason why I think this lawsuit needs to be revisited is because of the details of what I just explained, how you know, nefarious it is, how deceiving it is, how you know, disgusting the behavior is if it were to be true, right? Because essentially card porn is alleged to have created a charity in the name of a deceased man, right? They're leveraging off a dead man's name to make some money. They've used that and, and, and forged some photos, allegedly, to try and deceive this auction house, right? And when you're looking at, you know, all those steps, for all the things somebody would have to do to, to do that and the state of mind they'd have to be in, this lawsuit then comes back full circle and is what I talked to in my live the other day because, you know, this now needs to be questioned as well. And I'm... Um, you know, very thankful that I did decide to look into this again because like I opened with, some information has come my way in the last 24 hours that it's going to be pretty groundbreaking, you know, for a lot of you. So please bear with me and we will talk through it all. Now, where this information has come from is essentially through this account right here. They're referred to as Card Gems on Instagram and also on YouTube, card.gems23. And what they did back in January of this year, basically when this news first broke is almost cracked the case in my opinion. And essentially they, they looked into this situation. Now, if you're not sure what essentially went down between card porn, Ken Golden and the people suing them is the card that you're seeing on screen, the one at the top was listed for sale on Golden's auction, right? And basically what happened is whilst it was listed, some people you know contacted card porn and said, this card has been patch swapped. This image you're seeing down below has been around since 2005, allegedly. And we think it's been patched up. We've overlaid them. We've shown that the cards are in fact identical as I did talk to you in my recent videos. There's something hanky-panky going on here. We need to get it taken down. The card pawn basically got in touch with Ken Golden and got the card taken down. Now, this was made further complicated because this patch over here is basically supported by an upper deck letter of authenticity. The owners of this card had a conversation with upper deck and they said, yes, this card did come back to us as a damaged card. We replaced it. This is what we gave back. We're going to give you a letter that supports this. And the BGS label clearly states that it's authenticated by Upper Deck. So obviously the owners of this card were, were quite concerned because they had this card. They've got a letter of authenticity from Upper Deck and basically it's been taken down for what? And the, the lawsuit details a few things, but I think the, the general consensus is that maybe card porn wanted to act nefariously to try and get this card taken down to either, you know, buy it themselves for cheaper get it sold to a friend for a cheaper price than it would have sold on the auction house because, you know, the, the price that, um, you know, Ken Golden and others could get these brothers after it was taken down on the auction site was less than the estimate that it would actually sell for. Or whether, you know, card porn owned some of these cards themselves and they wanted to, to make sure they could strangle the market a bit tighter. So it was, it was quite a concerning situation. Off the back of that, obviously, this lawsuit has since come to light. Now, what Card Gems basically did, who's going to be the main talking point for today, is he saw all this sort of stuff happening. And what he did from there on was, was did a bit of a deep dive because he is somebody that he outlines in his video that you guys do need to check out when you do have some time or check it out straight after this or beforehand is went back through his archives to see what he could come up with, right? Because he talks to in this video being someone that was really passionate about these rookie cards. He was looking to buy one back in the day. So as part of that process, he was basically taking screenshots and downloading images of every single copy that he could find back in the day, you know, we're talking over 10 years ago. And what this meant was that he had essentially a catalog of 77 copies of these, because you have this card being out of 99, then you have the golds and the other parallels, which total to, I think it's 122 or 129, something along those lines. But he had 77 copies of these. And he basically said, well, 
This is really interesting. You've got Card Porn talking about this. I saw it on Golden Auctions. It's got taken down. What the heck is going on? I need to look further. And lo and behold, he actually had a photo of this card, and it wasn't the one you're seeing down below. It's what you're seeing on screen right now. He had a photo of this from 2008, which could have also been an earlier date. This photo could be from a lot earlier. He can't, you know, confirm, but basically showing that it has the, you know, alleged patch swap in there. Now, again, as I think I mentioned, this photo can be evidenced back to 2008, so it didn't really help too much within this lawsuit because, as I mentioned, Card Gems was essentially sitting back and looking at this and thinking, what, what the heck is going on? Because, you know, this image is shown and has some evidence to state that it's from 2005. So, you know, Card Gems is looking back and saying, well, I've got this from 2008. Let me send it to the brothers who are suing Card Porn and Ken Golden to sort of see, you know, what's happening, see if I can help. But his first step was to revisit the alleged patch swap card, i.e. what the original card would have been. And what he sort of noticed with this up front was some, you know, inconsistencies. You know, when I first saw this and talked about it in my first few videos on this topic, I didn't look into too much detail, but now looking at it again, it does look very, very suspect. And it has to do with, you know, the lighting and the shadows you're seeing. Like, firstly, you know, the shadow you're sort of seeing here on the left doesn't match up to the, the darkness you're seeing elsewhere. And um, one thing that Card Gems points out in this video as well is that with the other copies of LeBron James rookie card, when you're seeing the shadow around the top of the, the patch window, and then the right, and then also the bottom, you're seeing the shadow in all three angles. And when you look at other examples of this, as you can see on screen right now, you're seeing the shadow in all three angles. And this is in fact a scanned card, as is this one allegedly. You sort of see here, I clicked through a few of them, and you're seeing that there are shadows in, in those locations on the card. And it's odd that for this one, you're not seeing it. And one of the other things he mentions here as well is the patch window also looks very odd when you look at it up close. When you're looking at it at the bottom of the patch window, you actually can't see the border at all, which again, raises a lot of questions because for every other copy that you see, irrespective of, of the color of the patch, you can at least see the bottom of the border or you can see the shadow of the border, which then draws further questions into what is actually happening here. Now I should reiterate as well, I can't remember if I said this at the start, this card, Essentially, these two cards overlay with each other, do show in fact that they are identical. The only difference is the patch window itself. Now, what uh, Card Gems also found is that there were some other weird inconsistencies with the wording and the text in some locations where it looked a little bit smaller on this card than it did on the photo that he found in his portfolio, this one over here. But again, it's sort of hard to, to prove because his photo is from 2008. This one, despite dodginess or the, the dodgy look of it, is from 2005. Allegedly, what has gone on? He shares some thoughts on this. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but what was also interesting is he did a post on this 32 weeks ago on his Instagram and somebody commented basically implying that they were a Photoshop expert and said that the, you know, the lighting differences you're sort of seeing over here and the fact that you've got a shadow on this side, which implies the light is coming from the right, but then you've got a shadow over here implying that the light's coming from straight down and means some of these shadows don't make sense. And then the reason why you're not seeing the bottom of the border here is because it was Photoshopped out to try and make it look a little bit more realistic than what it actually is. Not to mention the reason why these shadows look so dark and look a bit suspect is because they were intentionally put in there to make it more, look more real than what it is. Because if they weren't there, then it would look very you know, obvious that it is a, a, a fake card. Now, what Card Gems, I believe, talks to in his video is that he thinks maybe somebody's Photoshopped this to try and list it for sale on eBay to try and scam someone. Now, the reasons behind why a Photoshop did occur is unbeknown to me. I, I'm not going to speculate on that, but um, from what I'm seeing so far, I, I can almost buy the fact that this is a Photoshop card, but there's you know, a few more things that give further substance to this that once again highlights the power of this community because you know what Card Gems did next was utterly fantastic in my opinion, and I'm shocked his videos only got 650 views because if this was more mainstream six, seven months ago when this lawsuit first broke, I think you would have found the vast majority of the community would have sided with the Spiegel brothers as opposed to siding with Card Porn and Ken Golden. Now, like I said earlier, basically when he saw these, he did some research as to where these jersey pieces would come from because he thought, well, okay, I can't prove that this is Photoshopped. I can't prove that my photo that I have on my hard drive is from, you know, earlier than 2005. It only states it's 2008. So how else could I help these brothers? Because I think, you know, a Photoshop has occurred on that card. Somebody is lying here. Somebody's done some hanky-panky. I want to help these guys. How can I help? So he did some research and found a copy of a 2003 LeBron James jersey. He makes a very clear point here that the jersey he found for reference is actually a rookie photo shoot jersey, which is what was included in those patches, not a game jersey, which means 
um, there are going to be differences between the, between the two. And what he did off the back of this was he decided to try and rebuild how these patch windows would be produced, right? And he, he basically leveraged the 77 photos that I referenced earlier that he had on his hard drives, along with you know some other ones that he was missing by reaching out to other collectors to try and see what would happen next. And he sat down and looked at some videos that you know Panini and Upper Deck would have put out in the past showing how they would go about producing these you know jerseys. And what he found is he actually could start photo matching some of these things and putting them onto places on the emblem. And he actually got a, a fantastic insight on this and was able to put the allegedly patch swap card in a spot on the badge that probably shouldn't have happened if it was in fact patch swapped, right? And by that, I mean, what he basically did was he took the card in question and found where it was meant to go. And it was up here on this, um, the V in Cleveland. And the thing is, let's say this was a patch swap card. What would the coincidence have to be for the patch that these people put into this card just so happened to line up to a spot where no other card does on the Cleveland logo? And he's got all these arrows over here, basically lining up to where all the other cards go. And yes, I said he has over 77 of them and there's not 77 patches here because as he does explain, a lot of them are purely white only patches, which are hard to figure out where they would go. But the fact that this card so perfectly lines up and he, he's found the counterpoint card that was cut to match up with this goes, that to me is pretty clear that it's not a patch top card. But there's one other element that he found that is actually tied to a, a very famous story that again, not many people have talked to. And that is the fact that this card gives further insight as to maybe a patch swap not occurring. Because this is a very famous LeBron James rookie where somebody basically had the card out of a one touch. They were, I think, having a glass of water or a beer, a drop of water fell on the card, they wiped it off. And what did it do? It smudged the auto. Out of frustration, they then ripped the base of the card off, i.e. removing the auto, and now essentially damaging the card. The reason why this is interesting for the Spiegel brothers in this lawsuit is that because they ripped it up, we got a bit more insight as to what the bottom of the card looked like. And unlike modern day Panini products and tops, the patch itself is bigger than just the patch window. What you see today is the patch literally only being in that spot. So if you pull it out, there's no part of the patch that goes underneath the card for the most part. What is clear to see here why these guys ripping the base of the card off is that the patch actually goes very deep within the card itself. And not only did that give card gems, you know, more insight as to how to fill these patches, right? Because obviously part of the patch is not seen within the window. So now it fills the gaps that you're sort of seeing on these cards, but it gives further substance to a patch swap maybe not being able to have been done. Because if you sort of go back here, right? And you're looking at this card, if we go back to the bigger photo that I had, you know, for somebody to patch swap this, it would mean that the patch is probably still underneath the card. And if you're looking at, at this card in the BGS slab, you're going to see maybe some white still under there. But if you're looking at this in person and maybe these brothers can take it to BGS to open the case to try and look underneath, if you're not seeing any white there, right, you're going to be pretty clear cut that it wasn't patch swapped unless somebody's taken apart the card completely and then again resealed it, which would be a bit of a mess and a really big risk for a card that's worth this amount of money, which wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility, but not something that I'm sort of buying into. So all in all, I think... That's some really good insights that uh, you know card gems have done, and, and in my opinion, should change a lot of your opinions on this whole situation. Yes, could I be, you know, reading too much into this? Could the patch swap still have occurred? Sure, but given that the the patch in there lines up so perfectly with another known card, i.e., this is the two of ninety nine, this is the card in question, it lines up so perfectly. That would have to be some crazy Jedi mind trick powers to to think ahead or find a card and say, you know what, we're actually going to stick it in like this to make sure it lines up you know, that's a big thing to try and get right. And you'd have to be so lucky to do that. You're going to have to have better odds than, you know, backyard breaks getting all the product hits and all that sort of thing, right? It's crazy odds. And I, I, I think it's a very interesting one. And in my opinion, it probably changes the outcome of this lawsuit. I was sitting back there in the last video saying, well, you know, I find it strange how this card could be there from 2005 with this image. Is it Photoshopped? I don't know, but this is very odd. Most of my complaints in that video went to upper deck for backtracking a little bit and for Ken Golden to do what he did. But what I've found out today also regarding Upper Deck's backtrack, I, I've been told their letter still stands. They've not rescinded that. That letter still stands. That BGS slab still stands. It's only Golden and Cardborn based on the pressure that Cardborn put onto Golden basically caused this card to get taken down, which has caused you know, a heck of a lot of problems. And what card gems here, you can see the rest of it basically filling up the James portion of the name on the back of the jersey has done here is 
so insanely good that it once again is a fantastic representation of everything that's good about this hobby because you've got experts out there that are doing this research, that are doing their due diligence, that are doing the right thing by their fellow collectors and looking into these kinds of things. These brothers are so incredibly lucky that you had a guy out there taking screenshots because he loved these cards so much. He was trying to find the best one. He was basically storing these screenshots on his hard drive. I do the same thing for flawless soccer Chelsea patches, actually. So because this guy did this, these brothers might win this lawsuit purely off the back of that. And that's so freaking cool to me, the fact that you can have people in this hobby doing things like that and, and sort of saving the day as opposed to a lot of the stuff you see these days where people are, are not really doing their research. I think Patrick Ryan did a really good video on this with the live stream with Darren Ravel the other day where he talked to um, how the watchdog space is impacted by people quickly jumping down the throat and quickly jumping on to record something. Whereas, you know, back in the day and still for some people today, you have guys doing their research like this, actually forming and stockpiling things and then presenting it to people and saying, you know what, the evidence speaks for itself. But unfortunately, in this instance, nobody's seen the freaking video. So please, if you've seen this video, go ahead and watch Card Gems video. Comment on it. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Lots of people have seen this, prominent people within this hobby, and they've not done it. And to make the whole situation even crazier, this information was given to Card Porn. They didn't do anything with it, is my understanding, which, again, is crazy to me. Because then going to what we opened the video with, with what they've done or alleged to have done, I should say, alleged to have done with this fake charity and all that sort of thing. With that mindset now applied to this, was that intentional? Was this manipulation? Were they trying to do hanky-panky? You know, if those allegations are true and this turns out to be true, I think it's fair to say, well, it's obvious to say that, yes, they did do that. So let's watch this space. Let's see what happens next. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty crazy situation. Apologies, this video ended up being quite long, but there was a lot to talk to today. This was all done in one cut. So I, I do appreciate your support. If you can give me a thumbs up and a, and a follow and a comment, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let me know what you didn't like and I'll try and do a bit better. But but like I said, um, this is blown wide open for me because when I talked to that original video, I was very comfortable in saying that, okay, these brothers, I don't think they did anything wrong, but maybe someone did something wrong before they got the card. But the fact the patch lines up and it goes to where it should on the jersey is almost all I need to know. So before I wrap up, um, please check out Car Gem's video. Give him a like, give him a follow because he deserves it. That, that is fantastic work. I cannot emphasize how good of that was for him to do because without this um this lawsuit's probably done and dusted so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one cheers